Welcome to the build log number 5 video. In this video we'll look at the z-axis including the printed part designs and the build platform. If you're new to this series check out the beginning of this build log by clicking on the video on the screen now. The z-axis on my 3D printer will be the cantilevered design. That means the z-axis will be suspended, driven and guided on one side of the z-axis only. Because of that, I only need one motor for the z-axis. And in front of us here is the motor bracket for the z-axis. Just a simple design, it simply slots on top of the motor like that. These two screws screw into the aluminium extrusion on the top, followed by the two on the side that you can slide in to lock in the Z-axis. Next up, we have the Z-axis guide rails. There'll be two guide rails for the Z-axis on this 3D printer, one on either side of the Z-axis stepper motor. For each guide rail, there is a pair of one of these clamps, which fits on the top and bottom of the frame. The eight millimeter hardened steel simply slots inside uh, the gap on either one of these and then uh, pinches to lock in place. There are two mounting points on this clamp to connect uh, to the 2020 aluminium T-slot. Uh, and lastly, the guide rails have been set up so they are perfectly lined up with the axis of the stepper motor. So they'll, all three of these will be lined up. Each of the Z-axis linear guide rails will be accompanied with a Z-axis carriage. The carriage simply houses two LM8UU ball bearings. They are held in place using uh, two C-clamps, one over each bearing. There are just M3 screws and nuts locking those into place. Once that's slid onto the uh, Z-axis linear rod, there are two mounting points here and here for the uh, build platform, which is also made out of 2020 aluminium T-slot. The build platform is made of the same material as the frame of the new 3D printer, 2020 T-slot aluminium. Each length here is 250 millimeters. The printed bed will sit somewhere uh, out here. Uh, this bar at the back here will be connected to the two linear uh, guide rails, which has the Z-axis carriages, one on this side and one on this side. Once these three pieces have been assembled and connected using these aluminium corner brackets, the same corner brackets that have been used to assemble the new 3D printer frame, this part is very rigid. There's no movement at all. And that was one of the goals that I was after. As this is only being assembled from one side, I needed the uh, entire build platform to be as rigid or as stiff as possible. And using uh, these aluminium corner brackets has allowed me to reach that goal. Here we are looking through the front of the 3D printer and you can see that I've installed the Z-axis motor mount, the stepper motor, the coupler and the 8mm lead screw uh, to the bottom rear of the frame. This was my original uh, thought for where the Z-axis motor would reside but unfortunately I don't think I'm going to be able to leave it, leave it down here because allowing for the, uh, the height of the coupler and where the nozzle of the uh, hot end is going to be off the X-carriage we're only looking at about 130 millimeters of uh, z-axis or height uh, print surface here. So 130 millimeters of print height is is too low. The goal was to get 200 millimeters in print height. So I'll need to uh, mount this motor at the top of the frame. And as as you can see, I mean, there's a lot of uh, height wasted here anyway. So having this motor at the top will be hidden behind the X carriage and I'll be able to print further down than what this motor down here will allow. So still looking from the front top of the 3D printer, I've moved the Z-axis motor mount and Z-axis motor uh, to the top rear of the frame. You'll notice that the motor is sticking out uh, above the frame. This is the only object that is sticking outside of this new 3D printer frame. So uh, I might redesign this motor mount to recess the motor further down to maintain all the objects within this frame. The two linear Z-axis guide rails are also installed on either side of the Z-axis motor. And that's also allowed me to attach the build platform to the two Z-axis carriages. And as you can see, it is sliding beautifully up and down the Z-axis. And notice 
um, actually moving it from the front of the build platform all the way out here and the build platform is rigid it's not binding twisting skewing it is maintaining its its flatness while I'm moving it to up and down this platform of course it'll be uh, moved from the rear here as that will line up with the uh, the lead screw coming out of the stepper motor looking through the rear uh, of the 3D printer and also turned on its side, you can see the rear of the Z-axis and the carriages. It's moving nice and freely, of course. Uh, the one thing that you don't want on the Z-axis are these linear ball bearings to bind as they're, as they're traveling down, because any binding or, or sticking will show up in the Z-axis of your print. Uh, you'll also notice that the Z-axis stops uh, a little bit further down now, it stops uh, as it's hitting the uh, linear uh, clamps. Um, I'm now getting about 150 millimeters of uh, print travel in the Z-axis, so still short of the 200 millimeter print height goal that I'm after with this printer. So what I'll be doing um, after this video is the bottom uh, 2020 aluminium T-slot post, I'll be moving that further down so I can move these Z-axis linear clamps further down. Uh, that'll allow me about another 35 millimeters of travel on the Z-axis. So now I'm looking at about 185 millimeters of Z-axis height. So I'm only just short of that 200 millimeter goal. And I'll probably leave it like that for the time being because if I try to attain the full 200 uh, with this frame, I'm I'm not sure uh, if that's even attainable. I think it's just easier to have the uh, the vertical posts uh, only about 15 or 20 millimeters longer, and that'll then provide the full 200 uh, distance. So the original uh, dimensions that I gave in the first build log video, where the X was uh, 350, the Y was 300, and the Z was 350, I might update those dimensions on the screen just to show what I would recommend that you that you purchase and cut to get the full uh, 200 travel. And you'll also see I haven't attached the lead screw yet to the uh, stepper motor. I have it here in front of me. If I just simply slide that on, you can see even if I did try to go for the full uh, 200 in height, I'm going to be just short here with the uh, the end of the lead screw. Uh, okay, I can move the motor down another say 20 millimeters, and I think I might get the full 200. So, but I still think maybe upping the lead screw size from this was this was the 250 millimeter length potentially to the 300, 300 millimeter length. I still need to design and attach the uh, lead screw nut to the rear of the uh, build platform here, but that's not going to take me too long. That'll simply uh, attach to the front like that, and then that'll allow the motor to control the build platform. The last thing that I'll be doing with the Z-axis um, after this video is on a when you finish 3D printing, the first thing you do is you try to rip the part off the build platform. On my current Perusa i3, the entire build platform is fixed to the Y-axis. The Y-axis is solid on the printer, which is attached to the feet, which is attached to the table. So putting pressure on the build platform isn't a problem on my current Prusa i3 3D printer. But on this printer, let's just say you're only building something that's only, say, 50 millimeters in height, so the build platform stops about there. The problem that I have here is the entire build platform is being suspended by this coupler at the top, which is also just locking in the lead screw and to the motor shaft using two uh, M3 grub screws. So any uh, downward force that you apply to this build platform is being transferred to those grub screws. And I guess the worst case scenario is, is if those grub screws give way, the build platform will slam to the bottom. Not a big deal, but not ideal either. So I think if I was to, to buy a stepper motor purely for this scenario, buy the stepper motor which already has this lead screw inbuilt. You can get them from places such as Banggood, and that will get rid of the coupler and any issue with this falling down to the bottom. But what I'll also do uh, to the other end of the build platform, so at the front uh, near the base, is I'll actually print out a couple of blocks. 
So what that'll allow me to do is at the end of the print, I can have the build platform move to the very bottom of the printer, which will then be supported obviously at the back here as it is now, but also at the front, I'll have the 2020 aluminium uh, resting on blocks. And that way you can push down as much as you like on the build platform and all that force isn't going to be exerted to the stepper motor further up. Having the Z-axis stepper motor at the top of the frame also limits the movement on the Y-axis on the Core XY. So now I can't push the X carriage uh, right to the rear of the frame. I lose about 25 millimeters of travel in this direction. That means I'm 25 millimeters short of the full uh, 200 millimeters on the Y-axis. But again, that's not going to be a too big of a deal for this frame, at least for me, uh, I'll, with the dimensions that I updated earlier, uh, instead of uh, the x-axis being 350, uh, I'll reduce that to 325, as I'm currently getting to, uh, 225, 230 millimeters in travel on the x-axis, so I can reduce the x-axis by about 25 mil, update the y-axis by 25 mil, uh, that means the frame will be square as opposed to this rectangular design and it also means you'll get the full uh, 200 on the y-axis back.